The following program does not necessarily reflect the views of the management or ownership of KMSG-TV. This program is not intended to present the opinions of KMSG-TV or Sanger Telecasters Incorporated, nor does it represent station policy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host of Personalities in the News, John Castle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am John Castle. Once again, Personalities in the News is presented for comment and commentary. The purpose of this program is to bring to the attention of the people the affairs of state at all levels, local, national, and international. When conflict of ideas arise, debate results, thereby bringing before us more facts for our consideration. Only when the pros and cons of a situation are voiced can we expect the people to make more intelligent decisions concerning our future. Conservative and liberal viewpoints are necessary. If you have a question or an opinion, call it in and it will be discussed. Our telephone number is 225-5959. Before I turn to my guests for this evening, there are a couple of points that I want to cover. Saltwasser Manufacturing recommends the following books for reading. The Council of Foreign Relations Tightens Its Grip by Phoebe Courtney. The Insiders by John McManus. None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen. And this magazine, The New American. Now this magazine may be purchased by simply writing to Belmont, Massachusetts, The New American, Belmont, Massachusetts. Right there, ask them about this particular magazine, The New American, and they will answer. That's all you need, Belmont, Massachusetts. The other three books may be purchased by writing the American Bookstore at 60, or going to the American Bookstore at 608 East Olive here in Fresno. That's in the Tower District, and it's open from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday. Again, that's at 608 East Olive. I would recommend that if you have a question, please write the question down and then call it in and it will expedite Jan taking the question for you to make it much quicker and much, much smoother. Also, I would remind the viewing audience that if there is a particular subject that you would wish to have discussed on this show, Write me, John Castle, here at this station at 706 West uh, Herndon, uh, Channel 59. I'll do my best to cover that subject. Or if there's a particular person that you would wish to uh, see on this show, write me at the same address, and I'll do my best to get that person uh, on the air for you sometime in the future. I have two guests with me this evening, Dr. Carl Coleman and Dr. Thomas Potigian. Both are chiropractors. This evening we will be discussing the uh, profession of chiropractic as well as uh, the comparison of what they do versus what uh, doctors do, MDs. They will be giving only their opinions this evening, so bear in mind if one of them says something that's absolutely definite, that it will be solely their opinion. And uh, I want to make that very clear before we get started that it will be an opinion because we have two professions here, medical versus the chiropractic, and these gentlemen will be speaking with opinion only. Welcome to Personalities in the News, Carl. Thank Thomas, you, welcome to Personalities in the News. Uh, before I start asking questions dealing with the subject, I'd like for each of you to just give a wee bit of your background to the viewing audience. We'll start with you, Carl, so that these people will know who you are, where you were educated, etc. Well, my background, I'm from Fresno, Fresno High, Fresno City, Fresno State. Went to Life Chiropractic College um, in San Lorenzo in the Bay Area and, uh, and uh, uh, worked in Sunnyvale for about seven months and uh, came back to the Valley. Real happy to be back. It's pretty congested up there in the Bay Area. Thomas? Well, I was raised in Fresno and I've lived here my entire life. Uh, I went to high school here, and I, I went to uh, Fresno State, and I went to chiropractic college uh, for six years in Southern California at a college called Cleveland Chiropractic College, and I've been practicing now in Fresno uh, for since 1980, and uh, been very successful at it. 
Okay, thank you. Now we'll move into the, to the subject for this evening. Can you tell the viewing audience, and either of you may answer it, so I'll ask most of the questions so that either can a, a answer the question, and uh, occasionally we'll have a call come in over the, uh, over the phone that will want a particular person to answer, and when that mm -hmm. is so, then I'll ask you that uh, directly. But, but just exactly what does chiropractic entail? We hear about it all the time, and somebody say, well, gee, you ought to see a chiropractor. And somebody says, no, I'll go to the doctor. Uh, and then someone else says, no, I'll go to the chiropractor. So tell us what chiropractic entails so that the people out there don't know what kind of questions to ask. Well, John, chiropractic is the science of locating misalignments in the spine with the basis that these misalignments interfere with the nervous system. And being that the nervous system controls all functions of the body, when you have these misalignments, they interrupt that function in the body. And what chiropractors do is locate these important misalignments in the spine and correct them, restoring the body to normal health and function. Okay, thank you. How do you locate these and how do you correct them, uh, Carl? Well, um, we do orthopedic, neurological, and physical exam with the patient. We, we find out what the, the symptoms of the patient are, whether they have uh, uh, headaches or whether they're having back pain, neck pain. Um, we do the tests, uh, ranges of motion, uh, different text, tests for fractures and, and pathologies. And, and we take x-rays. We uh, put the exams along with the x-rays and the symptoms. We sit down with the patient and we try and determine what the problem might be. Okay, do you have them fill out a questionnaire much as the MD does then? Oh, yes. It's and, it, and the questionnaire de deals then primarily with the things that you will deal with or the things that you by law are authorized to deal with. Or will it even be beyond that? When I say beyond that, will it, would it, would it take in, for example, a, a person having suffered from fever or a person having suffered from a blood disorder or anything like that? Will it oh, cover yes. any of those things? Well, we take into account all, all, all the operations that the patient's had, a normal case history, uh, operations, any medication they're on, uh, the nutrition that they have, their, their familial background, find out if they've had uh, uh, their father, mother, things like that, have had problems with their back before. Um, okay, would, uh, would that indicate maybe then that it's an inherited weakness or characteristic or genetic thing if if uh, father and mother or one side of the family had this problem? John, we take all that into consideration when we have the history form filled out and we go into the orthopedic and neurological examination. We keep all that in mind and we do ask the question, do any of your family members have history of anything related to what you might have today? Okay. okay. What, uh, I know that there's going to be a lot of people out there wanting to know the amount of education that, that you have to go through. And you've already told them that you did go to a, a specific school. But how intense is this education? Either of you, I don't care which one answers it. Please. Well, chiropractic uh, is very, the school is very intense in the respect that we are trained extensively in anatomy, physiology, chemistry, and all other branches of the science, including neurology, biochemistry, uh, and the functions and structures of the body. Uh, we were trained and educated for six years. Uh, two of those years were our undergraduate career, and that led up to four years all year round at, uh, at a private chiropractic college. It was very extensive because within that period of school, we received a BS degree at the chiropractic college, also being required to pass a national written examination, which incorporates uh, approximately 1,300 written questions that we must pass before we receive our license. Once we graduate, we are required to take a oral examination, quite extensive in several areas of, uh, of science, anatomy, examination, and uh, techniques 
in chiropractic, and we must pass both of those to get a state license. Okay, now that, that tells me that, that they're pretty hard on you. Is that true in all of the states or just here in California? I can only speak for California, but I'm sure in most of the states they have very extensive uh, requirements as well. Okay, now somehow or the other I didn't hear you say continuing education, and I know that in real estate and uh, even in law there are some requirement that these people keep on going. I think that eventually they're going to make even attorneys go back and do more and more and more and more of it uh, in order for them to stay in business. But what is the requirements for continuing education for our chiropractors? We're required to uh, take yearly a uh, re-education course and, and uh, units in different areas of studies in chiropractic yearly and uh, to uh, upgrade our license and continue our our education yearly to uh, maintain our license okay now let's go to the back to the back to the your clients let's assume that uh, somebody comes in to you and says gee i just don't feel well uh, my dad or my mother or some friend said that i should come and see you tell them out there exactly what you're going to do at this point Either of you. Carl, let's have that you handle sure. that one. Well, first, uh, uh, first, of course, they're filling out the normal uh, case history form or, or their initial introduction form, and I can see whether they've had headaches or whether they're having neck stiffness or pains down the arms, which we consistently see, or, or sciatic pain, maybe pains down the legs. Um, and uh, from, there, from there, I check to see with the case history uh, what kind of if they've been in accidents, if it's been a gradual onset, what kind of uh, problems they've been having. Um, at that uh, uh, particular point, uh, I uh, talk to them and, and we go into a, uh, do a physical orthopedic neurological exam. In the orthopedic exam, we're checking for uh, ranges of motion, uh, we're checking for uh, fractures, we're checking for um, uh, other orthopedic problems, neurological problems we're checking for, we're checking dermatomes, which, which are areas in the body, in the skin that, that uh, are sensory areas, and we can check approximately what level uh, they might be having the problem at. Uh, we check their grip strength, uh, quite a few tests we do. Okay, then how often should a person see a chiropractor? Or is this even a rule? Doctors, uh, we're told that we should have a complete physical at least once a year, especially after you're 35. We're told that we should see our dentist a couple of times a year. Uh, how often should we see a chiropractor then? Well, if you don't mind me answering sure, that question. Sure, go ahead. I'll carry you one of The majority you. of the time, the people that come into our office are in, in pain. Mm -hmm. But that does not always the necessity for chiropractic care. We work with prevention and we would like to have people come into our office or any chiropractic office to get a thorough chiropractic examination to pre prevent something from occurring such as pain, uh, these misalignments that we mentioned, before they come to the extent where it's a crippling type disorder where they cannot either walk or they have extreme numbness or headaches constantly. If at that time we can locate these missile lines before they evolve into something this critical, it at that time saves the patient money and a lot of aggravation. But majority of the time people come into our office in this state of pain and uh, it is very extensive at that time in treating them to correct the cause of their problem because it's much more evolved. It's been there for a while to develop into the pain state. Once we get them over the phase of the pain, which is the first part of any condition, we would like to continue on to correct the structural misalignments. Mm -hmm. There are two folds to an injury. The symptoms followed by the structural misalignments. Once we relieve the symptoms, we'd like to follow up in a continual care, less frequent than what was before, and continue to correct the structure and align the structure of the spine. At that point in time, we will be eliminating the cause, the actual cause of that person's 
symptoms, which would be that misalignment. Okay. Does does this hurt? Any of this that you're talking about, the pro procedure, mm -hmm. does it hurt? Well, uh, usually for chiropractic adjustment, the only time it hurts is uh, is when the person's already in pain. Usually, if if they do come in in pain and they're they have uh, uh, they've fallen down or something like that, then then it it hurts just to move them at all. But uh, normally, no, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. Okay. I see we're going to uh, have a we have a break coming up right now. Let's let's take it and then just as soon as it's over, I'll come back to uh, questions for you gentlemen. For right now, a, a break, ladies and gentlemen. The Rice Road Recycling would like the public to know that the Mars Curbside Recycling Service has been returned to service. Your continued participation is very much appreciated. Your day for setting out your recyclables will be as it was before service was discontinued. For further information, call 439-9211 for assistance. If you're having trouble finding parts for your Volkswagen, come to Century Distributors in Visalia. We handle only Volkswagen, so you're assured of finding everything you need in parts and accessories. Volkswagen engines from $395. Volkswagen transmissions from $175. Body parts, dashes, door panels, pistons, clutches, carburetors. We have it all, and we sell wholesale to the public. That's Century Distributors, 2417 East Main in Visalia. You're viewing personalities in the news. If you have a question or an opinion, call it in. It will be discussed. Our telephone number is 225-5959. Taking a call this evening is Jan Peters. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask one of the questions that have come in. I have several that have come in already. I'm going to ask just one of them, and then I'll come back to some of my questions. Uh, this first question, and it's directed uh, to Dr. Kalman, uh, what do they believe about uh, shiatsu and pressure point massage, also ultrasonic treatment? Do they use these three treatments? I don't know what they are <coughs> other, other than ultrasonic, so would you care to tell them about this? Well, a shiatsu massage is, uh, mm -hmm. is a form of massage. I think that uh, most physiotherapy is, is real important and, and helps a lot. But uh, you've got to get to the cause of the problem. Um, if if the, the cause of the problem is a misalignment and we have pulling of the muscles or we have pressure on a nerve that excites the muscles, you could do massage and you could do ultrasonic therapy uh, and, and it just won't help. It, it covers up, actually covers up the symptoms of the problem. Um, ultrasonic therapy is high frequency sound waves that go into the tissue area and, and it uh, relaxes the muscle, softens the, uh, any adhesions or scar tissue in the area. Um, but that, it covers it up. If we get good uh, adjustments and then use the um, shiatsu massage or we use ultrasonic therapy or hot and cold packs, things like that, uh, collaterally, then it works real well. Well, do the uh ultrasonic sound, are they hot or cold, these uh, sound waves? Well, sound waves are neither, well, they, they are neither hot or cold. Uh, uh, the, the sound waves are the thing that is, is helping in this particular case, is moving inflammation out of the area. Um, at times, if you keep it on too long, it will get hot, but that's, that's something not having to do with the the frequency are not having to do with the actual um, the benefits of ultrasound. Majority of the time, ultrasound is uh, you don't feel anything but a mild vibration, mm -hmm. very mild. That's all that is. That's it. Okay, here's another one. Uh, what does a chiropractor do for multiple sclerosis? This caller has had uh, multiple sclerosis for 13 years and has had chiropractic treatment uh, on and off during the entire time and has had no improvement. In fact, it is getting worse. And yeah, well, either of you care to answer that? I'd like to answer that. Sure. Multiple sclerosis uh, and related to chiropractic, getting chiropractic treatments, 
when somebody would come into my office asking uh, if I could help their multiple sclerosis, I would not say directly I would help their multiple sclerosis, but what I would do is look at that patient as a chiropractic patient. I would first try and locate any underlying cause of that, such as vertebral misalignments, and when locating them, I would correct them, realigning the spine. Now, that is not directly saying I'm treating the multiple sclerosis, but those misalignments can cause muscle imbalances and dysfunction in the body. So in effect, I would not be directly treating the multiple sclerosis, but allowing the misalignments to be corrected at that point, allowing more function to the body, and then the body would be able to, if all that is properly done, would be able to function more uh, at a more higher level and uh, hopefully correcting some of the effects of the multiple sclerosis, but okay, it's now, very difficult. Actually, the multiple sclerosis would be something that a doctor, an MD, should be trying to help. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, at this point, they really just have not found a cure for it. It's very difficult. It's a very advanced disease. And, and to date, uh, both chiropractic and the medical field uh, are limited in helping it. That's, uh, I've known several persons that have uh, died from it, and it, it's very, um, very distressing to know that there's not really a whole lot in the long run you're going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. You can try to relieve and make their life simpler and easier. Or am I wrong on that? We would always try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would never deny anybody chiropractic. Okay, uh, Dr. Coleman, I know uh, from having talked to you earlier that and in fact, we have a x-ray right here that we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to talk about it right now, because if I don't, the questions that we're going to get in are so many that we'll never get to this, and this is something that I specifically want to move to. Uh, as I understand, the individual in this particular x-ray was to an MD first, to a doctor first, and so I would like for you to tell the story behind this, but don't use any names. Right. Okay. Well, this particular patient, uh, it was a uh, injury at work, and uh, she was sent to a company doctor, a uh, workers' compensation doctor, which was a medical doctor, and uh, she had uh, muscle spasms. She had lifted something, and she had just uh, real heavy muscle spasms in the the lower part of her back. And uh, uh, so the doctor took x-rays, did the exam, took x-rays, and uh, uh, came out of the x-ray room, looked at the x-rays, and said there are no, no uh, pathologies, no diseases, no fractures in this case. Now, this is the information that your client this is, gave to you? Yes, this right. information that was given to me. And uh, no misalignments. Now, now what the... Um, this particular medical doctor looked at is different than what I look at. And, and we can look at this x-ray now. So this, this patient uh, um, was having muscle spasms for 30 days, a, a full month. He said there were no misalignments, no fractures or anything, and, and prescribed different uh, uh, medications, muscle relaxants, and, and physiotherapy. Uh, well, she constantly had this pain, and, and finally, after 30 days, she was able to come to me as, as a patient. And uh, you can see this x-ray, uh, and it's very easy to see. That's why I brought this. Um, this x-ray you had, uh, this, had taken. I had you taken did not it at a medical, medical x-ray lab. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see this is the side of the vertebra here. This is the other side of the vertebra. These uh, points right in here are the spinous process, the end piece, the bumps that you feel going up your spine. We're looking at this from the back, looking forward. You can see how far over to the left these are. I mean, these are very far over to the left. This was the exact area that she was having the pain in. Um, after 30 days, she came to me. The first, first time she came to me, immediate results. I mean, immediate lessening of pain. The second time she came to me, um, there was quite a bit of less muscle spasm in the area. But what they're looking for is different than what we look for. Okay. At least in the x-rays. All right. Tell, let the viewing audience know what the difference is then, because this oh. is, to me, to me, I think this is important. Okay. 
Um, we, we really need this uh, chart. All right. Can we get that okay, up? Okay, surely. Okay. Okay. Now you can see as we're looking down here, this is essentially what this x-ray is here. We're looking down and this is very straight. Um, uh, very straight spine. And the bumps right here are the bumps you feel on your back. We're looking at it from the back looking forward. Uh, now as we look at this x-ray right over here, uh, you can see that these bumps are way off to the side. Now it indicates to me that she's got muscle spasming, muscle pulling, uh, possibly pressure on the nerve which is making the muscle spasm even more. So you have a vicious cycle running there. You've got uh, uh, spasming muscles because the vertebra is over to the side. You've got pressure on the nerve which excites the nerve, makes the muscle even spasm more and uh, uh, it pulls the, pulls the vertebra even more. So uh, in okay, adjusting she, it helped quite a bit. She had 30 days with the MD and how many treatments did you give her before she was able to go back to work? Well, uh, it... Uh, approximately. Approximately, before she was feeling good about that, the back and, and lessening, quite a bit lessening of pain. It was about uh, four treatments, I would say. And when did about she four find, treatments. And when did you return her to work? Well, I returned her to work probably uh, another uh, three weeks, four weeks. She went back to work. Um, and uh, uh, since then, she is not doing the lifting. Uh, it was quite a bit too much lifting for her to do. Uh, I think that if this company would have had a pre pre-employment uh, physical by a chiropractor, uh, she, she probably would not have been put on this job because uh, she was an accident waiting to happen, I'm afraid. She was too light for it. Yeah, just way too light, yeah. Okay. Okay, when a person has a muscle damage in, uh, to the vertebrae, and the vertebrae is constantly adjusted, uh, can't it affect the muscle in a dangerous manner, such as uh, atrophy? Either uh, of them. I don't quite follow the okay, question. Okay, let me read it either. again. When a person has muscle damage and the vertebrae is constantly adjusted, can't it affect the muscle in a dangerous manner, such as astrophy? Um, if I understand the question correctly, first of all, you said the muscle is uh, damaged or aggravated. Uh, in other words, spasm. I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand the question. Can chiropractic adjustments uh, cause atrophy. Well, let me explain what atrophy is. Atrophy is where the muscles actually shrink in size due to lack of movement, such as when an individual has a cast on their arm or leg, that area has not moved for several weeks. When that cast comes off, the leg or the arm muscles will appear to be smaller because they have not been exercised. Uh, if I'm following the question again correctly, can chi will chiropractic adjustments cause atrophy? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. I think I understand finally what they were asking too because I didn't understand it. Now I think I do. Okay, this question. This one is for Dr. Potigian. Collar has a bad left ankle. She thinks it's a cracked ankle. If she wraps it with a bandage tightly, well, uh, or she, if, she, if, she, if she wraps it with a bandage lightly, will it relieve the pain? Will she need ultrasound or would uh, she need something else? Does she need to stay off of it? Well, of course, if it hurts, I would think so, but go ahead. Uh, was it diagnosed as being fractured, the ankle? She says she thinks it is. Okay, what I recommend, I recommend very highly this individual to have uh, that ankle thoroughly examined because if it is fractured there are certain things you should do and certain things you shouldn't do so the first thing before you have any wrapping or any support then to, well of course it should be supported but it should be checked out by a doctor of chiropractic or a doctor of medicine and in the event that it is fractured uh, I'm very certain that the chiropractor would refer you to a medical doctor for casting. Now that, uh, that brings up uh, another question uh, you people don't do anything in terms of, uh, of curing. You treat, but you don't do anything in terms of curing. You don't prescribe uh, medicines of any kind, uh, or do you? No, do you no. Do anything? No. no. Our, our field is 
in restoring the body's natural healing abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, our philosophy is not to prescribe, or our license is not to prescribe any medications uh, or uh, perform any surgeries. Our belief is to restore proper function of the body where the, therefore the body can, if given the opportunity, heal itself. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in just a moment to continue with questions for uh, these two chiropractors. For right now, though, a short break. We'll be back with you in a moment. The Rice Road Recycling would like the public to know that the Mars Curbside Recycling Service has been returned to service. Your continued participation is very much appreciated. Your day for setting out your recyclables will be as it was before service was discontinued. For further information, call 439-9211 for assistance. Five, four, three. It's the Electric Motor Shop at 253 North Fulton at the corner of Monterey and Fresno. Direct distributors for GE Motors and Controls. Rewinding and repairs on nearly all motors, industrial and commercial. Also, electric wiring and supplies. And a wide selection of Browning V-belts and pulleys, micro switches and programmable controllers. One of the largest stock of used motors in the valley. For more information, you call the Electric Motor Shop at 233-1153. The Electric Motor Shop. You're viewing personalities in the news. I'm John Castle. If you have a question or an opinion, call it in. It will be discussed. Our telephone number is 225-5959. Taking the calls this evening, Jan Peters. I have two guests with me this evening. To my immediate left, uh, Dr. Carl Coleman, and to his left, Mr. Thomas Potigian. Both chiropractors here in Fresno, both from Fresno, and we are talking about the chiropractic uh, profession versus the medical profession, but only versus in terms of how they're treated. Okay, this question. Caller feels if he has a tight collar on when he doesn't, uh, and when he doesn't, it gives him headaches. Is there anything that can be done for it? The caller feels as if he has a tight collar on when he doesn't have one and it gives him a headache. Is there anything that can be done for it? The, the caller is saying that if, if he has a tight... He feels as though he has a tight oh, collar. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, yes, it can. The tight feeling that you're most likely feeling within yourself is spasming of the muscles in the neck. And depending on what's causing that, either misalignments in the spine or, or spastic reflexes, uh, yes, that can cause headaches, and quite frequently in my practice, and I'm sure in Dr. Coleman's practice, we find this very readily and, and uh, very easily treated with uh, chiropractic adjustments. The muscles in the neck attach uh, in areas in the back of the head, and if there are spasms in the muscles, that spasm would cause a feeling of pain in the back of the head due to the tension back there. So. I found that with correcting, after locating misalignments in the, in the neck region, those muscles, the spasticity of those muscles, balance out and there is no uh, spasm, therefore eliminating the cause of the headache, if that is what we find. We're getting so many questions in that it's unbelievable. Go ahead. What? Well, I put up another x-ray right. on the break. Uh, this is a, a, a very normal neck, um, or a very good neck. What you want is a nice curve in that neck um, so that you, it rests over the shoulders and, and you're able to walk and it's a shock absorber type effect. Now, now what we find, this is a patient, what we find a lot of times in say car accidents are patients that uh, their neck straightens out quite a bit. This is, is a fairly young patient, but look how the neck is straightened out here. Now, as that neck straightens out, of course, it pulls all those muscles very tight. Her head is constantly falling forward, uh, so all these muscles are very tight back here, and there's no shock-absorbing effect at all. Um, it's pulling muscles, nerves, arteries, and veins that are going into the skull very tight. And, uh, and 
uh, consequently, they do get headaches. That's, that's a uh, main thing that we see. That is a big thing that we see. Okay. Ask is their, uh, <clears throat> their opinion. What is more beneficial to the spine, sitting in a chair or sitting on the floor without any support? Either of you may answer that. Well, <clears throat> sitting uh, is not the best thing to do on the spine if you look at a gravitational force. Uh, the best position for the spine, uh, as opposed to gravitation, the force down on the spine, would be lying down with the knees bent. Uh, in a seated position, uh, especially if a person is in an acute state of pain in the lower back and or has a disc that has uh, quote unquote slipped or herniated, upon sitting you will put approximately 11 times more pressure on the discs in the lower back. So therefore, it would not be indicated for you to sit down. It would be much better for you to lie down or stand up. Sitting will put more pressure on the lower back. Okay, the, I think here that, that the question that I ask, sitting in a chair or sitting on the floor, which would give you the best support? Whichever would allow your spine to retain its normal curves. Uh, you can sit either on the floor or in a chair improperly. You should be properly supported so the curves and your neck is in an upright position, not so you're looking down or your head is cocked to one side. Oftentimes people sit in very uneven postures and it causes their spine to tilt to one side, spasming the muscles. So if I sat on the floor without any support, I wouldn't be as well off as I would be if I sat in this chair, sure. leaning back for support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, well, you know, that, that answers Straight the question. Straight chair is right. the best. Straight chair is the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What can be done for a ruptured disc that uh, did some damage to the spinal cord in the uh, thoracic area. Caller has had a very, uh, has had surgery and is left with some numbness and heaviness in the legs. Either of you. Well, if, if in effect that it was a diagnosed herniation in the thoracic region and was a, uh, what I consider post-surgical failure where the individual still has uh, the original problems after uh, the surgery as he had before the surgery, it's difficult to answer that question without, without knowing uh, the exact extent of the surgery that was performed because there are structures that have been changed after surgery. So uh, just from the information I have, I wouldn't know if definitely a chiropractor could help that condition or do any much for it. But what we could do is work above and below the surgical areas uh, balancing out what I would assume would be uh, other misalignments in the spine and therefore working above and below the surgery and, and allowing the spine to heal in those areas that might be interrupted as well. Okay. What is your opinion of thermography as a diagnostic technique? Uh, I believe highly in thermography. It's a very good uh, technique in the respect that it does not have any harmful effects if overused on the patient. It uh, it works with the heat transference from the body in the event of a spasm or a uh, uh, interruption in that particular area. If the muscle spasms, it will, it will uh, emit more heat and this is what the thermography projects and has a, a uh, way of recording that information. So I believe highly and I find it's very helpful in, in court cases and so forth. All right, tell us what it is, doctor. So, so far, I, I just know that it helps I know a little bit of what it does. Now, Dr. Carlman, let you tell what it is. No. Okay. All right. Go uh, ahead. Okay. Uh, thermography is, is utilized in, in there's different ways of, of, of thermography, but one of the simpler ways that I've seen are special uh, uh, liquid crystal plates that they put on the area of injury, and depending on what sort of injury there is, it would emit heat differences. And these uh, thermography plates will emit colors mm -hmm. and these colors represent di very very accurately uh, heat differences uh, that can be directly related to the area of injury uh, if I can utilize if I can utilize this piece of film as the uh, thermography plate we would put it over the area of injury and it would emit uh, color transferences uh, representing heat differences. 
and those heat differences would indicate that there is a problem in the particular area and it's graphically okay, now inflammation if, or yeah, circulation right, That's problems. what I was going to ask. If, if, if it indicated that this spot had a lot more heat coming out of it than this spot over here, then the one with the most heat would probably be the one that was hurt or well, injured. It, that would not be, thermography is not used oh. uh, singly. Okay. It's used uh, secondarily to prove and document, yes, there is another, there a is a problem there, but that's not the change. only thing. They would not just utilize thermography and say, yes, there's a problem. That would be a secondary thing they'd use for diagnostic purposes. Okay, this question. Have we reached the point in, in history, in the development of chiropractic, that it would be an act of medical malpractice for an orthopedist or other MD to fail or refuse to refer a patient to a chiropractor? That's a good question. Uh, well, I personally hope it never comes to that because mm -hmm. I have good relations with some medical doctors and, and I believe uh, in the medical profession, the respect they have their field, they have their areas of expertise as well as the chiropractors have their particular areas of expertise. And I feel that in the future, the way it should evolve is where uh, doctors of chiropractic and doctors of medicine can both relate and refer back and forth to the other in the event that uh, one has more expertise in the area of the other. Okay. Why is it that in England, orthopedists use chiropractic manipulative techniques, but in this country, orthopedists refuse to use... If an orthopedic uh, insert or an orthopedic shoe is... Necessary in some cases, yes, we do. Okay, so you, you do kind of in, indirectly um, make a prescription for something, not medicine. No, we, of give, we, we advise them. We advise okay. them that this would benefit their condition. I don't force or prescribe anybody uh, any particular. Uh, okay, item. I understand. Okay, this question Are there occasions when chiropractic uh, cannot cure but merely uh, maintain the health and physical stability of an injured human being? Please discuss. Uh, I think in, in some cases uh, where the, the uh, physical condition of the patient has deteriorated. Uh, to the point where they do have spurring and, and things like that. We can maintain, we can keep mobility. Uh, it's very hard to cure. I mean, we cannot cure. We can help. We can help in chiropractic quite a bit. Okay. Uh, we're going to need to take another break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in just a moment to continue with questions. They're coming in fast and furious. I will try to get through them. For now, short break. The Electric Motor Shop at 253 North Fulton at the corner of Monterey and Fresno. Direct distributors for GE Motors and Controls. Rewinding and repairs on nearly all motors, industrial and commercial. Also electric wiring and supplies. And a wide selection of Browning V-belts and pulleys, micro switches and programmable controllers. One of the largest stock of used motors in the valley. For more information, you call the Electric Motor Shop at 233-1153. The Electric Motor Shop. You are viewing personalities in the news. I am John Castle. If you have a question or an opinion, call it in and it will be discussed. Our telephone number is 225-5959. Taking the call this evening, Jan Peters. Before I return to my guests for this evening, I would remind you uh, individuals watching the show out there, if you ride horses, wear western boots, or need your western boots uh, repaired, the place to go is at Manning Western Boots. He has two locations, one at 261 West Shaw and the other one at Clinton and Fresno Street. He has a very large selection of boots for you, uh, and they include Nakona, Acme, Texas, uh, Dan Post, H-Bar-H, Dingo, Korea, Stock Show, Santa Rosa, and Abilene. If, uh, again, if you need your boots repaired, the place to go is Manning Western Boots, and again, two locations, 261 West Shaw, and the other one at Clinton and North Fresno Street. My two guests for this evening, to my immediate left, Dr. Coleman, uh, Coleman and to his left, Dr. Potigian. These questions, gentlemen. There are several different kinds of chiropractic methods, the Palmer method and others. What is the difference between the Palmer method and the others, and which would uh, you use? Um, well, the, the actual school of Palmer teaches probably six, seven, seven different methods 
Originally, the Palmer method was um, was adjusting one vertebra, essentially one cervical vertebra, uh, the um, atlas or C1. Uh, myself, I use full spine technique because that, that suits my practice, it suits my philosophy. Uh, and I adjust the whole spine. Doctor? Well, in the beginning, the Palmer method was, uh, as I understand it, was named after the founder of chiropractic and the technique, yes, in the beginning was a, a very, uh, a technique that utilized adjustments of the first cervical vertebra or the atlas. Uh, quite often, most doctors of chiropractic are trained in various techniques, not only one, and they would apply the technique that most accurately would correct their problem. Okay, can they do anything for an extreme sinus condition? Also, caller had a tendonitis in her uh, shoulder had uh, therapy for nine months with uh, ultrasound. Uh, her specialist said it would hurt for two years. Can they do anything for this? Either of you or uh, Again, uh, first of all, I would have to distinguish the cause. If it is tendonitis, uh, where the tendon is inflamed, then the treatment and the answer to that was correct. But in, I found sometimes in my practice that individuals might have been misdiagnosed in respect that their condition was not a tendon inflammation, it was a nerve inflammation that was radiating to that area of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And when I have adjusted and corrected the interference, that radiation or that pain symptom disappears. Okay, this is a, very much similar to the other question, but I'm gonna ask it as is my policy normally. Are there different schools of, or theories of chiropractic such as Palmer, uh, kinesiology, ki kinesiology, kinesiology, thank you. Uh, if so, please discuss uh, and distinguish. Well, there, there are all kinds of techniques. The, the, the main idea is to adjust the vertebra. There's the, um, the Palmer technique or, or um, the upper cervical technique where you're adjusting just the one vertebra. Um, there, there's a uh, Gonstad technique where you're adjusting the full spine. There's an activator technique that you use a actual appliance to deliver a short, fast thrust to the, to the area that you need to adjust. Uh, there is a Cox low back technique that works very well in disc problems. It tractions out the low back and, and the negative force in that traction uh, pulls in at times it's able to pull in protrusions and get pressure off of the nerves uh, there are many te techniques in chiropractic and, and quite a few are are being uh, being new techniques are being worked on every year well really. I, I find that as far as philosophies and different schools of thought in chiropractic we are all trained and we all believe in the philosophy that if there is a misalignment in the bones in the back, thus causing the interference, at which time we correct these misalignments, we are restoring the body back to its normal function. Uh, that is the main school of thought that all of us, it, that is universal in our chiropractic profession. Okay, thank you. Collar has 10 vertebrae misaligned, uh, is, on medic, uh, is on medical. Why is it x-rays are covered one time and, and, not, and the next? Time not. What could be the reason? Well, as far as covered, uh, every insurance policy, if that's what you're referring to, every coverage is different. And I, I can't specifically answer this individual's question because it, it's, it's not something that uh, I can answer without more information. What you might want to do is, is check with the company or the uh, person that is covering your uh, x-rays as far as charges and so forth and representing you and they could probably better answer your questions. Okay, thank you. Dr. Coleman has uh, asked Dr. Coleman, has he ever had a patient with a broken neck whom he has treated who has been able to return to work? Um, I had a patient that had the, the first cervical vertebra or the second cervical vertebra fracture, actual fracture and it's called in the odontoid processor or uh, uh, 
it's a very major, major vertebra. Uh, it allows the head to turn around. Um, that fracture probably was two years old, so it, it had healed somewhat. And uh, this patient had lower uh, neck problems, and I was able to help them quite a bit uh, relax the tension in their neck and in their uh, shoulders. And they were having a real lot of pain, a real lot of pain in the neck and shoulders. Okay, caller has a doctor friend who has a misplaced uh, patella from a bicycle fall in England. Caller suggested to him that he wrap it in horse liniment or absorberine junior. Would this help him? Please. Uh, I don't know. Try it. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know what ointments or so forth he's putting on the skin uh, or what the ingredients of those are, but again, you're just treating the superficial tissue and not the underlying cause, the structure and function of that area. Okay, caller has an atrophied muscle. After 10 years of chiropractic treatments, the chiropractors hit it gently and the caller feels the uh, atrophied muscle collapsed even further. Uh, is that possible? She feels this is what happened. No, uh, I, I'd have to disagree with, with your thinking in this matter. Uh, if the muscle was atrophying in the beginning, I, I, again, I don't know the extent of this particular condition, but if the muscle was atrophying, I don't believe whatever was done at, at her doctor's office could have increased that. I do believe what is occurring is, is consistency in that atrophy and, and possibly the condition should be looked at more extensively. Uh, into the cause of it because it's just continuing. Okay, are there any laboratory facilities in Fresno where one can have a thermographic study made and if so, where? Uh, again, a thermographic study is for uh, is not for locating problems but only for, do for documenting them and it, it would not be beneficial for the uh, person to just want this type of diagnosis. What I do in inform you to do is, is follow up on a chiropractic examination, call a, a chiropractor, and in the event that the chiropractor feels a, a thermographic uh, documentation would help locate that problem, uh, therefore he would, he would request that. But again, this is used for documentation, and, and quite often the chiropractors can help a condition without that information. Okay, we have time for one question. Caller felt that if he ever went to a chiropractic and if he were adjusted and then had to go back and have his spine adjusted again, wouldn't all of this moving in and out cause his spine by reason of slippage to have this problem all the time and then would have to uh, keep going back all the time? Uh, uh, quick answer to that, gentlemen. The ligaments and the muscles, uh, physiologically, they take about six, six weeks or so to heal. And if they're out of place and they heal out of place, then you've got a problem. Uh, you need to get that vertebra in place and keep it in place. You can't put a cast on it, uh, so we've got to keep adjusting that until those ligaments heal even and uh, there's well, there, no pressure. Well, there's, there's a certain amount of responsibility in the patient itself. It's just not all up to the doctor. He has to, he has to watch himself and what he does. Okay, we have just one minute left and I want to cover just one more thing for the viewing audience out here. Uh, remind you again, if you need a pair of good boots or a pair of shoes fixed, go to Manning Western Boots and have it done. Uh, he has two locations, 261 West Shaw and the other one at uh, Clovis and North Fresno Street. I see our time is up, so the viewing audience tune in again next week, and I will be back here again with another guest. Till then, it's John Castle wishing you all good night. Thank you for appearing, Dr. Thank Coleman. you, John. Dr. Thank you, my Tiggin, pleasure. Thank you, and thank you, Jan. Good night, all. The foregoing program does not necessarily reflect the views of the management or ownership of KMSG-TV. This program is not intended to present the opinions of KMSG-TV or Sanger Telecasters Incorporated, nor does it represent station policy.
boys, it's time for dear old mom to tie on her apron and develop a new snack. A snack that's 100% natural, like grapes. A snack that's bite Like grapes. A snack in various flavors. Like grapes. Low in sodium, uh, low in calories. Like grapes. A snack in a convenient package. A snack that tastes as good as grapes. Whoever invented grapes must have been a genius. Here again. And it... Thank you very much. <laughs> I like it here in America. What surprises me that people in America don't know we have comedy in Russia. Russian comedian to American sounds like Mormon wino. <laughs> we have comedians, they're there. They're dead. But they're there. It's hard to do comedy in Soviet Union because you have to write out all your material and you send it to Department of Jokes. And I'm not making this up. Every state in Soviet Union has a Department of Jokes. They censor your material, they send it to Moscow. There's a big Department of Jokes. They send it back to your censors. You have to stay with the script. You cannot improvise. If someone heckles you from the audience, you can't say, like, your mother wears army boots. <laughs> because she probably does. <laughs> and she will hurt you. <laughs> you have to be very careful what jokes you pick. If you say, like, take my wife, please. You get home, she's gone. <laughs> I realize I wanted to get out of Russia, but it's not easy because you apply for a visa, but they give you MasterCard. And... <laughs> There are no things like American Express. They give you Russian Express. Don't leave home. <laughs> Finally, after about two years of waiting, I got an answer to get out. My first stop in America was in Cleveland, Ohio. Anybody? Are you from Cleveland? They made me feel at home in Cleveland. So I had to escape again. Now, I make fun of Cleveland because everybody makes fun of Cleveland. Isn't that true? Every country has one city people make fun of. In Russia, we used to make fun of Cleveland. <laughs> then I got to New York. New York was great. I walked off the plane, I saw my name written, big letters, Smirnoff. <laughs> America loves Smirnoff. I said to myself, what a country. <laughs> My parents came out with me to America, and uh, our living condition changed drastically. I mean, in Russia, we used to live in a communal apartment with five other families, and until I was 26 years old, we lived with my parents in the same room. And when I was a little kid, if my parents wanted to make love, uh, they would tell me, you know, my father would say, go look out the window. <laughs> and then he would say, what do you see in the window? I say, our na neighbors making love. <laughs> And he said, how can you tell? I said, because their son is looking out the window also. <laughs> it took me a while to adjust to a lot of things. I realized I didn't speak English. I have to learn your language. So I locked myself into a room and I was watching television for three months. And then I realized it was a Spanish station. <laughs> Now, I've been here for a while and I still make mistakes because you have so many confusing expressions. Like, for example, one guy came over to me and he said, um, I quit smoking cold turkey. <laughs>